Hello, this is the third part of the How to Use FamiTracker series. This lesson will focus on controlling the volume and effects of a channel. Channel effects are really the center focus of a tracker because of the very granular control that you can get from it. It's really what makes FamiTracker so unique and, and fun to work with. So in the last part, we talked about um, these first two columns of data inside of FamiTracker in the instrument. And um, the first one represents the, um, the note and the octave that's being played, and the second one is the instrument number. Um, the next one I want to talk about is this third column right here, which actually is the volume. So you can input numbers, and this is actually hexadecimal, meaning that instead of going from 0 to 9, it goes to F. So really, hexadecimal uses 16 distinct symbols. Um, most often, symbols 0 to 9 represent 0 to 9, and A, B, C, D, E, F represents the values uh, 10 to 15. So this is the full volume range that you can get from an instrument. Um, hexadecimal is actually used quite a lot in FamiTracker, so just remember that 9 isn't always the highest number that you can input. Beyond managing the volume for a channel, um, the column further right over here is where you input your effects. Um, similar to triggering a note, an effect generally lasts until you either turn it off or modify it. So even if you have multiple effects being triggered in here, each individual effect is um, tracked and um, modified independently. And I can get into more detail uh, in, a, in a minute on that. Regardless, it's very important to keep aware of which effects you have active at any time because if you have one kind of running in the background that you don't know about, it can affect all the notes further down in your project and um, that can lead to some, it's not really like bugs as in like a programming bug, but it's one of those things where you kind of have to hunt down the problem and fix it. So you'll notice that there's only one effect channel here, but if you click this arrow right here, you can actually expand up to four effect channels per each oops for each um, for each uh, instrument or for each uh, instrument channel and this is good because it'll allow you to do a lot of different controls on one frame if you need to um, it's also important to note that if you do have effects over in these channels and you hide them those effects won't trigger they're essentially um, muted or invisible so I'm going to go through all of the more common effects that are used in FamiTracker production. I um, do have a full list that can be found in the description. It's just a paste bin link. And that is something that you can download and keep um, for your own reference. I have it just in the root folder of my FamiTracker, just so I have it if I need to. Um, so yeah, when you're adding an effect, it's important to know how to actually add an effect. So the, uh, the first character is what defines the effect and then the second characters after this actually define what the effect does so in this case a stands for changing the volume and the second character here um, determines how fast the volume comes in and the character after that determines how fast the volume goes out so this both works as um, basically a crescendo or a decrescendo or a volume up or a volume down so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete all of this stuff and um, I'm going to go through some of the common effects. So right now we just have a basic tone. Real exciting. Um, so the first effect I'm going to talk about is arpeggio, because this is one that you're going to use a lot if you just want a quick arpeggio for a simple chord. And this is the zero effect. So right now it's zero, zero, zero. Um, zero is for the arpeggio, and the second one is the second note and the third one is the third note and these go up by um, half steps so if you want to do a minor um, a minor chord it would be zero three whoops zero three seven which would be um, if this is playing C which it is it would be C D flat and G so if we hit play there you go we have um, we have our minor chord and if we wanted to, we can add other notes, and it would change um, the note, but it would keep the it would keep the effect because we're not turning off the effect. So if we want to turn off the effect, we just do zero zero zero, and this would turn it off. So exactly like that. 
The next effect that I want to talk about is the vibrato, and this is triggered by four. And what this does is this um, basically adds a slight modulation to the pitch of the note. And the first, the four, determines the vibrato, and then the second um, character determines the speed, and the third one determines the depth. So you can determine how fast you want it to um, oscillate up and down, and after that, you can determine how far in semitones you want it to oscillate up and down. So if we do 464, four, which is one that I go to pretty commonly, we get, we get something really glitchy for some reason. There we go. So that's not, that's not super noticeable. So if we turn it to 468, we, um, it's pretty obvious to see. And to turn this off, just like the other ones, you just do 400, and this just turns it off. After that, we can go to the one I mentioned earlier, the A, and what this does is this changes the channel volume, um, and you can either determine whether you want it to get quieter or louder. So this one is actually can be really tricky to use because what you're doing is you're changing the channel volume. So like this um, this section over here. So if we if we get rid get rid of that effect for a second, we just do just like a a very quick fade out like this, this will fade the note out in, in increments. And we can do the same thing if we just set this to A and we just tell it to fade out like this. So this is, and so right now I have this set to two. If I set it to one, it would fade out slower. And if I set it to nine or something really high, it would fade, it, or eight, it would uh, fade out quicker. So this is good if you want to get a really simple pluck sound without creating an entire instrument preset up here. Um, however, it's important to know that with this you are changing the, um, the channel's volume. You're not changing the note's volume. So if I have another note after this, it, it, it's not going to play that note because the channel's volume is set to zero. You notice it didn't play this. However, if I set the volume of this back up to F or 16 or the max volume, now, now it'll play it. So it's very important to turn off the, um, the, the volume changes when you're not using them because this can create very drastic problems for your project if you're not paying attention. Um, also remember that the triangle channel does not have any volume modulation on it, so it cannot it cannot do anything. So if you have um, if you have something here and you try to fade it out, it's not going to happen. It's either it's either on or off. Yeah. So once it hits zero down here, it just turned the note off. Oops. Okay. So the next one I want to talk about is um, the D. The D um, effect basically skips the rest of the frame. So if you wanted to have a, a pattern that was only two bars instead of the traditional four bars you have here. Um, you can have it, you can just set the D and this will move to the next frame. Um, the, the, the two numbers after this allow you to set the row you want to start on on the next frame, but honestly I've never used that. I guess you can make some like complicated choose your own adventure type songs jumping all over inside your projects, but for the most part I'm just uh, I just set it up to end the frame early if I only want like one or two measures on this. So the next effect I wanted to talk about is actually really a bit more complicated but very useful. It's the G effect. And what this does is this allows you to delay a current row by a set number of frames. Now determined by your speed setting up here, each frame or each row has six frames in it. So if I wanted to, I could do G6, and what this would do is it would delay the trigger of this note to the 0, 1 row. It's not super easy to, it's not like super easy to tell right away, but if I set this to B, this would uh, delay it by two rows. And what this allows you to do is you can set really quick, um, basically quick note runs without having to deal with an arpeggiation or if you want to, do, like, have a bunch of effects trigger on the same row, because this doesn't just go with notes, it goes with all effects as well. So if I wanted to, I could set this to like, I think eight, and then I could have this one set to like G 
four. I think that would work. So it's basically triggering these notes in delay so they're all condensed down into one area. So this is very, very powerful, but it's a little confusing to work with at first because there's uh, a, a bit of a, a bit of math involved, really. Oops, I deleted my note. Um, so the next effect I want to talk about is the Q or the note slide. And these are the fun ones. Um, so the Q allows you to slide a note upwards. And the, the next note here determines the speed of the slide. And the, the one after that determines how many semitones up it goes. So if I want to slide a note, a note up um, kind of quickly for an entire octave, and an octave is C because C is 12, um, I can just do this. So that's pretty cool. Um, it should also be noted right here that you can do these effects independent of whether or not a note is triggered because this affects the channel, it doesn't affect the notes. So I can go like this, which is pretty cool. And I can make the note um, slide up faster and I can make it slide up slower and I can make it slide up to maybe just the minor third. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Um, additionally, if you want to, just to if you want to slide a note down, you can hit the R key, and what this does is the same thing. You can just um, slide it down an octave. And again, this can create some pretty cool effects if you um, if you know what you're doing. And it takes a little bit of practice, but it's definitely worth it. The next effect is called the mute delay, and this is one that I actually use quite often. It's um, it functions similar to the G effect, which delays the row. But in this case, what it does is it cuts the note off after a certain number of frames. So before, you would have this note cut, but if you wanted a note to last um, shorter than one whole row, you can set this to like three, and suddenly the note would be very short. Oops, wrong button. And you can make it all the way down to one, which would make it almost um, very, very staccato. Um, this can also be used outside of the note trigger. So what this is doing is you're, it's just going one and a half rows, which is very useful. Um, and yeah, so I mean, this one's very useful if you want um, like a staccato pattern. You can go like this. Because that's not possible if you just use the, um, the normal note cuts. So... That's, uh, that's one that I use very, very often. Um, finally, the, the last one that I want to talk about is the one that actually modifies the duty noise. Um, and this one is really fun. This is the V one. And really, there's four settings for this. You can go V0, V1, V2, and V3. And what this does is this changes the pulse width for the pulse channels. And it does some other things with the noise channel, and I'll talk about that in um, the next episode when I talk about the noise channel. So when you have this, whoops, when you have this, it can change the uh, pulse width. And again, this is something that you can modify in the instrument editor if you wanted to, but if you just wanted to do something quick and didn't want to set up an entire preset for it, this is definitely the right way to go. So you can do some pretty crazy things with this if you wanted to. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of the projects that I finished uh, called Save the City. And I wanted to talk about um, just some of the things I did in here and um, things to look out for when you're making a project. So I'm going to loop this pattern um, a couple times. Okay, so one thing I didn't mention in the last video, and I, I'm kind of uh, annoyed at myself that I didn't, but you can actually mute and solo these channels if you wanted to listen to one thing. You can just click on it once to mute it, or you can double click on it to mute everything, and then you can just solo a channel just by having it open. So now if I listen to this, so I have two things going on here. I have the bass, and I have this... Um, arpeggiated um, bonk, which I think is right here. 
Yeah, so I have this as well. So I'm actually juggling two instruments um, on the same channel. But you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm using this S cut to make these notes shorter, and I'm um, unifying that across all of these. I'm making sure that all these notes are, are cut at the same time. Um, aside from that, I have a volume fade out here, but also notice that I'm canceling that volume, volume fade out when I don't need it anymore, and that's very important. I have a very slight pitch bend right here, um, it's just going down one semitone, so it's actually going down to lead into this note right here, because this is C-sharp leading down to C. Further down here, I do have a very, very slight vibrato, but it's cut off very quickly, and then remember, I'm canceling it right away. And notice that I also have this on the FX2 channel. I, um, I like to try to keep my effects as... Um, vertically aligned as possible. It's entirely possible to trigger the 464 here and have it turn off here, but I would rather just keep everything on the same column if possible just to make it easier to manage. So this was a very broad overview of creating and using effects within Famitracker. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I do have a link down in the video description that contains uh, a paste bin of all the available effects within Famitracker. Um, so you can just download that and use it without having to reference this video. Um, the next section in this video series will discuss the noise channel and how to properly use it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me through the YouTube comments section or my Twitter handle that's uh, displayed above. Um, if you found this video helpful and educational, uh, please consider giving it a like. Um, please subscribe to my channel because I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more of this stuff in the future. And um, just anything you can do to boost the signal would be very invaluable to me. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks very much.